Hey everybody, welcome to this next video in our Iceberg 101 course. We're going to be talking about Iceberg transactions step by step. So let's take a look. So our first transaction we want to do, okay, is we're going to take a look at a create table statement. So we're just creating a table of, you know, SQL statement as old as time. Okay, where basically we're just creating a table. This is db1.table1 with the following schema. Now notice we have this using iceberg clause. This is specifically for Spark. So just assume that for all these following slides, these are queries that are running specifically in Spark using the Spark SQL extensions. The SQ, specific SQL you will use for iceberg will vary minimally from engine to engine. Okay, um, but generally this is kind of what you're going to see. So using iceberg is just basically going to tell Spark that specifically it should use an iceberg implementation when it creates this table. Now the partition by statement, now this part is the exciting part. Okay, take a look at the way this, this is like worded. So notice it's not usually like if you're using Hive or something like that, you would just say partition by and I would say like, then I would have to create like a month or a day column. And then I would just say partition by, by month day. Um, problem is you get that problem we talked about in an earlier video where now people need to know that they need to query by these other columns that they weren't aware existed. Now here, instead of you creating all these special columns based on that timestamp column, what you do is you have this, these, these transform functions that are built in the iceberg. So here we have hour. There's also like hour, day, um, month, and then there's also like non-date ones like bucket and truncate uh, that allow you to partition in all sorts of really cool ways without having to create like additional fields. So essentially what I'm saying here is that the way I want this table partitioned is basically based on this on this column but on the value of this column after it's been transformed into an hour okay so i'm not creating a separate hour column so no one needs to query an hour column the table will just know that hey this thing's been partitioned based on this value um and we, we can take advantage of that so what's going to happen is we create the table. Again, there's, we're not adding any data yet. So all we've done is create, like, basically define the schema of the table and that the table exists. So first thing that's going to happen is that we're going to always work sort of like from the beginning, or really we work from the end back. So really we're writing the metadata file first to define the table because we want to make sure that we're done. We want to make sure that we've actually, like, written everything we need to write before we actually commit to the catalog. So now that the metadata file is written, Okay, we can then go back and then go to the catalog and then update it saying, hey, table one going forward points to this metadata file. So that way when the engine goes and queries table one going forward, it's going to tell it to go to, in this case, v1.metadata.json. And you'll see this like when we do the next change, it's v2, then v3, then v4, then v5, then v6, uh, and so forth. Okay, so that's just creating the table. Now let's add some data to this table. So let's just insert some values. So here we're just inserting these following values. So we're inserting one record. Okay, so now we do that. And essentially, again, what's going to happen is we work from the, big, from the end and work our way back to the beginning of the catalog. So we're going to write the data file. So we're gonna, again, we're going to read. First, we actually really do have to go read the original metadata file so that we know what the existing schema is. But once we know that, we then go back and we write the data file that matches the existing schema and if you know this partitioning we might separate them into multiple data files based on the partitioning and again by default those data files will be separated by part their partitioning schemes like so so you can see like hey, it's in a folder that matches that partition value and you see how it's like order ts hour so it knows that it's based on this field transformed by hour and then there's the value okay so data file so we write the data file now once the data file is written again we need that we need that manifest that actually lists that this file exists like this is a file as part of the table so we write the manifest file and once we have the manifest file well we need to list that manifest file somewhere in a ma in a current snapshot so when we write the snapshot the manifest list and then we can commit that write a new metadata file that mentions that snapshot and then tell update the catalog to say hey going forward refer to this metadata file going forward okay and that's becomes a norm going forward okay so that's essentially the, the writing of the data and notice how like by default you're going to see that generally everything is broken up into these two categories um when you're using like sort of like the, the native apache iceberg extensions for like spark flink um 
that there's a metadata folder and a data folder. So in the metadata folder, you'll, you'll see all the metadata and the data. But again, it, it can be different from engine to engine because the specification is on like how the metadata files are written. The actual location of the files is not dependent on, and that's the beauty of Iceberg. So our next transaction is we're going to run this merge statement. So we're going to assume we have this other table, in this case called table one stage, that has all the staging data, okay, with just new data that has data that might be updated or new uh, that we need to kind of merge with our existing table one because we need this new batch of data and we need to merge it in with our existing batch of data. So I'm going to merge into table one using the data from the, our staging table, and I'm going to basically merge it based on wherever the ID matches. Okay, when they do match, whenever the ID matches, make sure you update the original records. We're not creating a new record. We're going to update the original record uh, based on the, 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 the amount field. And when they're not matched, then we're going to insert it. So like if basically we have a field that's in the staging table that's not in the original table, that means we need to add that in there. So we're going to insert it. Okay, and so that's essentially what this, this, this statement is doing. So just like before, we're going to work our way from the bottom up. So first we're going to write the data files. And once we've written the data files, and you can see like they're all written in our file structure here. Okay, once they're written, then we actually have to list them in a manifest file. Once we have all our manifest files written, then we're going to list those files in a manifest list which is again our snapshot and once we got our snapshot we then create a new metadata file that lists our new snapshot and the previous snapshots and then we update the catalog saying hey catalog going forward point to this metadata file and so now any engine that queries this table is going to be pointed to this metadata file and they're going to have the ability to query any of these snapshots depending on the query coming in so that's pretty cool and you can see like all the files see like the different metadata json files and that's why again why we need a catalog because you're going to end up accumulating these metadata files and the catalog makes sure that the engine is always grabbing the right one. Okay, in the snapshot, you can see the snapshot Avro file has the word snap in it, so you know it's the snapshot file, that the manifest list, and then the manifests are just these hashed Avro files. Now in our next query, we're going to select everything from table one. So just, we're just going to read now. We're just going to, we want to read all the data. So now the pattern is we now we can go from the beginning to the end because we're not writing new data. So the engine needs to first find out, hey, does this table exist? So it goes to the catalog, says, hey, I'm looking for table one. The catalog says the table one, currently the, the newest metadata file is this meta one over here, v3.metadata.json. So then the engine's going to go scan v3.metadata.json. And since we didn't specify a particular snapshot, by default, it's going to read the newest snapshot. So the newest snapshot points to this manifest list, which points to these manifest files or fi file, which then point to the data files. And then we're going to scan those. And again, in this case, we'd have no filters, so it's just going to scan everything. Um, but that's essentially the pattern that we're going to read and understand things. Now, what happens if we get a little bit more specific? So we say select all from table one, where the timestamp is 2021-126. Okay. Well, here we can take advantage of the partitioning. Okay. So it's going to do the same process where it's going to go to the catalog, say, hey, I need this table. Okay, here's the newest metadata.json. Again, at this point, it knows it's partitioned by the order timestamp. So when it knows that there's a filter based on the timestamp field, when it looks at these two files here, the manifest list and the manifest file, it's going to be looking at that partition metadata and saying, okay, hey, which of these manifests do I really need to look at? Which of these manifest files, do I, I mean, which of these individual files do I really, really need to look at? And it's going to realize that the only file it really needs to look at is this file right here. Okay, so in that case, instead of scanning all three files of the entire table, it'll only scan this file that's in the proper partition. So you've just saved yourself some time in the, in the scanning of the file. Imagine like Imagine that at a much greater scale when you're talking about like petabytes and petabytes of data, being able to just skip, you know, petabytes of data. Not no, you don't have to scan it because it doesn't apply to your particular query. Okay, so this is where we start really seeing like the power of Iceberg and the way it structures this metadata. Okay, now select all from db1 dot table one as of 2021-526. 930. So in this case, what I'm, we're doing, so when you see this as of 
marker or this uh, as of uh, command keyword okay what it means is that we're not looking we're not filtering what we're doing is we're trying to, we're trying to specify which time st um, snapshot we want to look at so you're saying hey I want to look at the snapshot the, the 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 earliest snapshot that's right before this timestamp so like on that on that point or earlier so it's going to go back to the table find the metadata it's going to point which is going to point it to this metadata file still so v3 but except instead of using snapshot 2 which is the latest one well that was created after this timestamp so it's going to go to use snapshot 1 and then run through that process looking at that manifest list that snapshot file and running, looking at the files as it was there. So it's only looking at this file, not looking at these two files because they weren't part of that snapshot. Okay, so you can see that so you start seeing like, the difference in sort of the behavior and how, again, using the same set of files, we can construct different versions of the table based on like the, the point in time, aka time travel, um, using that metadata, and we can do it pretty efficiently and effectively because it's laid out in a way that's really easy to think through. So that's essentially how iceberg transactions work. In the next video, we're going to be talking about iceberg catalogs. So what are these things that we can use as kind of like a, our iceberg catalog, our iceberg table phone book? Well, we'll talk more about that in the next video. I'll see you guys there.